Hello everybody, this is Susan Woods, your self-appointed Black Lives Matter fraud investigator. Thank you very much for your time. Just wanna take a few minutes to get you up to speed on what's currently going on with my fraud investigations and what I've learned. As you know, I started investigating the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation in June of 2020 after George Floyd died. The organization generated or raised over $90 million they admit to $90 million, but we all know that it's more than that. And I've been reporting on where the money is going. My question had always been, where is the money? And through the investigations, we've learned that the money has been dispersed in a whole variety of different ways. But what's in common, the one thing that's in common is the person who approved the disbursements of funds, and that is Patrice Con Coolers. Patrice Con Coolers is one of the three original founders of the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. In 2020, she was the only original founder that was actively involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the organization. Therefore, she had the sole ability to make huge decisions about millions of dollars without board intervention. At one point, she was the board member. She was the board and the executive director. During that time, she dispersed, as I said, millions of dollars of different things that I've already discussed. But what I want to get to now is where the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation currently stands. In 2021, Patrice Con Coolers, in May 2021, she decided to resign. She said she could no longer serve as executive director or be affiliated with the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. She, by herself, decided that there would be a Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, a Black Lives Matter Grassroots Organization, and a Black Lives Matter PAC, or Political Action Committee. These are decisions that she made all on her own. When she decided to create the Black Lives Matter Grassroots Organization, she brought in a gentleman named Shalamaya Bowers. Shalamaya Bowers, and I apologize, I keep mispronouncing his name. But he was brought in as a consultant and was paid over $2 million to consult. Nobody knows what he consulted about. I have not been able to find any type of job description of what he was supposed to do. But he was paid. Patrice Con Coolers approved him being paid over $2 million because, again, she was the board member and she was the executive director. So she had sole control over how the money was used. In addition... Again, as I mentioned, she created this grassroots, BLM grassroots, which I don't know what that is really about, but she appointed her friend, Melina Abdullah, who is the executive director of the Black Lives Matter Los Angeles division or chapter, as it used to be called, that I've already reported on. You can go back and you can see my report on the Black Lives Matter Los Angeles chapter, which is a multi-million dollar chapter, by the way. So Patrice Con Coolers appointed Melina Abdullah to serve as the executive director of the newly created Black Lives Matter grassroots organization. So you had Shalamara Bowers that she brought in as a consultant for the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. And then she brought in Melina Abdullah to serve as the executive director of the grassroots nonprofit organization. Now here is where the problem comes in. Shalomar Bowers now is serving as the secretary of the board of directors of the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. He signed off on the 2020 Form 990 information return that I am currently analyzing and providing you with the red flags that I found. So he's listed as the board secretary of the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, while Melina Abdullah is the executive director of the Black Lives Matter Grassroots. Here is the problem. Melina Abdullah is accusing Shalomara Bowers of stealing $10 million from the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. That is her accusation, and she has filed a lawsuit against him. Now, of course, he denies the claims. He said that he has been trying to, but well, his lawyer said that they have been trying to reach out to Melina Abdullah and to her organization several times and refused to have a conversation because they never wanted this to see the light of day. They didn't want anybody to know that these two so-called leaders 
are feuding with each other about, ironically, money that we, the public, have been asking about for over two years now. So what happened was, as they say, Patrice Kahn Coolers left the organization and according to Melina, Patrice wanted the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation to dissolve and to have all of its assets, money, transferred over to the Black Lives Matter grassroots organization. Well, unfortunately, that is not the understanding that Shalomara Bowers has about the whole situation. He said Patrice, who is also his friend, never shared that with him. And apparently there is not a paper trail to indicate that Patrice ordered them to make that change in the structure. Now, what strikes me is everybody's going back to Patrice, what Patrice Khan Coolis told them to do, to dissolve the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation and transfer all assets over to the Black Lives Matter grassroots. How does she have the power to do that? How does she have the power to decide that you're going to dissolve an organization? There are steps you have to take to dissolve an organization. You have to submit paperwork to dissolve an organization to the Secretary of State's office where the organization is founded and to the IRS. And you have to have valid reasons to dissolve an organization. You cannot dissolve an organization just because I said so. So this further lets me know how incompetent all of these people are who are supposed to be managing $90 million. It is pathetic. It is sick. I don't understand. I'm just hoping that the FBI is behind the scenes investigating. They must be. This cannot be happening without any type of consequences. So now you have these two people, Shalomara Bowers and Melina Abdullah, publicly feuding over allegedly him stealing $10 million from the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. So you have these leaders publicly feuding over money that people gave to the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation thinking that the money was going to help the black community. So you have all of these millions of dollars that's just being wasted, wasted at the direction of, from the direction of Patrice Kahn Coolers. You have allegedly $10 million that's lost by Shalomara Bowers. She put him in position to steal the money if he did. She gave him $2 million to serve as a consultant. So that's $12 million. She ordered the approval of a $6 million purchase of a mansion in Toronto so that her wife could have a place to meet with the Black Lives Matter Toronto chapter members. So that's what, what is that? Um, $18 million, right? I'm losing track. And then you have $6 million more million that she wasted in buying a $6 million mansion, over $6 million mansion in California that a investigative reporter found out about and have video of Patrice, Alicia Garza, one of the other founding members of the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, and Melina Abdullah sitting around a nice table outside sipping champagne on the property of this $6 million property. So the last time I checked, I looked at the independent auditor's report that the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation uh, received from an accounting firm, and they are down to $35 million. Out of 90 million, the balance is currently showing at a little over $35 million. With no accountability. Now they submitted the 2020 Form 990 information return because of the heat they were feeling from the public about where is the money going. So they threw together this form, which I've already found several red flags and haven't even gotten through half of it yet. But where is the 2021 Form 990? Where is the 2022 Form 990? Why, hasn't, why haven't they submitted those um, Form 990 information returns so that we can see what's going on in those years? I haven't seen them. I am so aggravated and I wish I had more time to really dedicate to this fraud investigation that I started. I just don't have the capacity to spend as much time as I would like 
but I wanted to stop in today to just give you an update on what is going on now. You have two so-called leaders, Shalomar Bowers from the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation and Medina Abdullah from the Black Lives Matter Grassroots arguing about $10 million that Medina alleges Shalamaya stole from the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation because there are no boundaries. There are no rules in place for how a person can use the money that people gave out of the kindness of their hearts in the hopes that they will make a difference in the black community. And that has not happened. And we're almost $60 million missing since 2020 with no accountability. It is sad. It is pathetic. Next, I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish analyzing the Form 990 information return from 2020. That is the one, that's the year in which they generated the $90 million. I'm gonna finish analyzing it. It has 63 pages. I wanna finish working on that. And I then wanna go back to my investigations of the $21 million that Patrice Khan Kool has allocated to several, among several LGBTQIA organizations. I wanna go back and pick up on that investigation. And finally, I wanna follow up with the secretary, I'm sorry, with the attorney general of California who asked for the Form 990 information return for 2020 to begin with to, and warn them if they did not provide it, he would launch an investigation. I want to go back now and see where the investigation stands with the Attorney General's office in California. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your words of encouragement that you've shared with me over the past two and a half, two years, a little over two years. I started in June, 2020. So it's a little over two years that I've been investigating this Black Lives Matter fraud, $90 million fraud. It's sad, it's pathetic, it makes me sick to know how many organizations, Black-led organizations that could have benefited from this money. And it's personal for me too, because I have a nonprofit organization. I'm not offering programs under it right now, but I offered a program, two programs as a matter of fact, and our budget was less than $40,000 a year. And I had to beg, scrape and plead for $40,000. Imagine what we could have done with $100,000. And this organization is squandering away $90 million. We're down to a little over 35 million that they're um, published on their inter external audit. And that's, that's sad, that's sad. And finally, in closing, seeing how the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation or the Black Lives Matter movement fail from grace, if it ever had grace, fail down and crumbled, hurts the credibility of all Black-led organizations. If you are trying to do good in your community and you are struggling, it may be because struggling to get financial support. It may be because people are skeptical. Even though you have not had anything to do with the Black Lives Matter fiasco, just knowing how some Black leaders mismanage money so nonchalantly, so arrogantly, it's going to have a ripple effect among the other Black-led organizations, whether you want to accept it or not. It's a fact. So my advice to you is to make sure you go out of your way to demonstrate transparency and accountability in everything you do. If a funder tells you they don't need financial reports, give them to them anyway. Be able to provide transparency on your website. Have your Form 990 information returns on your website so people can easily access them and see them for themselves. Thank you so much to my private investigators who always send me um, emails or send me notes on um, the YouTube channel about things that you've learned about the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation and any other Black Lives Matter fraud. 
I thank you very much. I would never share your identities with anyone, but I do appreciate you supporting me. I need that. Thank you. And again, thank you for your time and have a great day.